Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for today. Thank you for the ministry of angels that is happening all over the place. And thank you even for your truth that is being ministered right now. As we teach these things, faith is stirred up. And we see the results of our faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. We are talking about angelic assistance. And I told you, God said, especially in this month of April, you will need angelic assistance. Praise God. So, we're looking into the role of angels in our lives. And yesterday I showed you from the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. It says we have come to an innumerable company of angels. There are angels everywhere. Praise God. So, so we, we, we looked at Elisha yesterday when, when he told the servants, when he told God to open the eyes of the servant. And the servant saw a whole army. See, they were there. They were there. Now look at something Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus was, they came to arrest Jesus. And you know the story, Peter brought out his sword to cut off one of the servant's ears. Matthew 26 verse 52 then said Jesus unto him, that's Peter now. See, Peter, he was speaking to Peter. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. Put back your sword into the shield. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Now I want you to understand something very striking here. They had come to arrest Jesus and Peter was standing there. And Peter in the defense of Jesus brought out his sword and was ready to fight. He was ready. See, Peter, Peter just believed that, I mean, this is Jesus now. When I start an action, I'll get back up somehow supernaturally. So he brought out his sword. No, Jesus, they can't try this. They can't try it. And Jesus said, hey, put it back. And he made a powerful statement. Now, this statement that Jesus made, made is true. Remember, Peter was his, one of his chief disciples. And he was carrying his sword around. But Jesus made a striking statement. You know, you want to ask, didn't Jesus know that Peter was carrying his sword? What was the sword meant for? But look at what Jesus said. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Now that is powerful. <laughs> Whoa. Peter wanted to help him. And he says, Peter, put it back. Why? It's because... Anyone who lives by the sword will die by the sword. In other words, if you think a sword will protect your life, because that truth is not founded, or that reasoning is not founded on truth, you will eventually die by the sword. If you think it's a gun that will protect you, then it's a gun that will kill you. That's what Jesus was saying. If you live your life having faith, ah, you see, I can stretch this out and show you a lot of things. I remember one time, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Allow me to digress a little today because this is very important for someone. 
last year, the Spirit of God spoke to us and we're having a prayer meeting. We're, we're, we're actually on a fast. And the Spirit of God spoke to us and told us that, hey, He told us to pray against someone in government, someone high up in government. Give us the name. And we prayed. And the Lord said, we should pray that He be taken out. So we prayed. Call his name. And a few days after that prayer, he had a problem. And then he had to go seek help. Now, when that was going on, the Spirit of God spoke to me one day and said, listen. Because it was a health challenge he had. And because we had already prayed him out, naturally you would think that, ah, that means this man is going to die. So, the Lord spoke to me and says, don't ever, and I had to teach the brethren this, this truth. He says, don't ever desire death on someone, even though the person wants you dead. And then he said to me, he said, because the moment you begin to believe that death, that death is the enemy of God, the moment you begin to believe that death is what will end your enemy, so you're, you're giving power to the spirit of death to help you fight your battle. Now, the moment you do that, you have, have given up your authority to the spirit of death. Now, you know what that means? That means the spirit of death already now has power over you. So when it decides to use it, it will use it freely. No resistance. I said, wow. Wow. I said, but Lord, you, you told us to pray this prayer. He said, yes, I didn't tell you to call death. So teach, he, he instructed me, he says, teach the brethren that you didn't pray. Because he told us what to pray and we prayed. it. We prayed that he be removed from that seat. So he says, I didn't. He said, because when we prayed that he be removed from that, we didn't say he should die. We just said he should be removed. But then the way we see the physical happenings going. It was leading to death. So it's natural to begin to rejoice and say, ah, see you. He said, don't rejoice at that. Don't even speak in that direction. So, so what's, what, what do we do? He said, leave that in the hands of the Lord. You have prayed what I told you to pray, that he be removed from the sea. And he has been removed from the sea. So let it remain that way. Whatever happens with him, don't put your mouth to it. Wow. You know sometimes how the Spirit of God will tell you something and then you rush with the little knowledge you have. You rush to end it with what you think. And that day I learned a valuable lesson. Now, I had known this, you know, I've known, you know, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. You see, when your enemy is hungry, give him food. I already knew, don't wish evil on your enemies. But it was then that this thing became too clear to me. And, and that reinforces what Jesus said here, that for those who live by the sword will die by the sword. If you live your life by causing death to come on, Others. Now, it doesn't mean you carry people to slaughter them. That's a, different, that's a different thing. But I'm talking about you as a child of God, you as a believer. If you live your life saying that that man must die before I can make progress, you are setting up your own self for death. Because you are living by death. As long as you wish someone else has to die before you will make progress in life. You know, sometimes people, people, you know, there's, there's somebody in your family that must die before you make. They don't need to die for you to make progress. No, they don't need to. If you say that, then you're saying, you're confessing that they are too powerful. The Spirit of God can give you wings to fly and you fly above them. 
they will leave. They, that's what David said. He said, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So don't wish anybody death. Don't. If you do that, you are living by the spirit of death. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you can pray that someone be taken out of the way. Someone be taken out of your way. If someone is disturbing, you say, Lord, just take him out of the way. However God chooses to take him out of the way. It's his business. But you see, this, this guy is an obstacle in, in front of me. I don't want to see him there anymore. But be careful how you conclude with things. You know, you don't mean use it carelessly. You know, die. Let him die. Let him die. Come on now. When you say that, you give your own authority to the spirit of death. And that means you bring yourself under. Because you're saying, what I cannot do, death, go and do it. So you bring yourself under death. We are not supposed to be under death. We are supposed to be above the spirit of death. That's why the Bible says death and life is where is in the power of our you want to leave be careful with these things thank you holy spirit all right let's go let's go let's continue we're talking about angels praise god so now verse 53 of what we're reading matthew 26 jesus speaking to peter look at what he said he said thinkest thou that i cannot now Pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. What a statement. <laughs> Jesus told Peter, hey, put back your sword in. If I need help, Peter, I can presently, right now, ask my father, to send me <laughs> more than 12 legions of angels. You will just see activity in this place right now if I want to do it. So I have the right to do it. But look at what he said in the next verse. He said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Oh, wonderful. 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 Hear me. Mm. Do we have time for this now? How can a child of God die in the hands of wicked men? Why? How? Look at this statement that Jesus made. He said, Do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall present not tomorrow? That's to tell you the angels are not far. I'll tell you the truth. When Jesus was going through all this, there were angels there. Now, there is the angel that carried the script of Jesus. You remember in the, in, in, in the book of Luke, when Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, when he got to that point of serious discouragement. Yeah, Jesus got to that point where he was wondering, should I, should I go ahead with this or should I back out? Yeah, he, he did. He, he prayed that prayer. God, if it is possible, let this cup just pass from me. This thing is tough, man. What, what did the Bible say? There appeared an angel. Doing what? Strengthening him. How do you think the angel was strengthening him? The angel was bringing him words. See, the angel was telling him, remember what you and the father said. Remember what the father promised you. Remember what you agreed with the father. You know, we were praying with my dad yesterday and he was sharing this with us and showed us how the spirit of God revealed, now my earthly dad now, how the spirit of God revealed to him See, that's what the angel was doing. Hey, you agreed with the Father on this. It's not time to back out now. So Jesus going on to that cross was the power of agreement at work. And that's what brought us salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> ah, our time is up. Listen to me. Don't let any evil just happen to you. 
There are angels there to help you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.